Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all our brothers and sisters in the city and beyond. Uh, today, alhamdulillah, we are meeting for uh, discussion. This is a Friday night, family night discussion, or ask an expert night, in which we would like to discuss, inshallah, COVID vaccine, matters related to COVID vaccine, and what we should know from medical as well as Islamic perspective. Uh, there are many uncertainties in today's time about COVID-19 and vaccine, but there are also lot of, lots of hopes that are present in our lives. Orawa today has set new record with 210 cases, COVID cases. Ontario province, 4,200 COVID cases. In Canada, more than 644,000 cases. Death, 14, uh, 16,700. Worldwide, more than 89 million cases, 1.9 million deaths. So all of this suggests that this is a serious matter. It's a matter of concern. We, alhamdulillah, at SNMC would like to uh, share information for the purpose of education of our community members. And let me, inshallah, start by proposing uh, that one of the principles of or purposes of Islamic law, Islamic Sharia, is preservation of life uh, in general and preservation of our health in particular. And this could uh, be attained or achieved via preventative measures and treatment. In preventative measures, we know, alhamdulillah, when it comes to a tahara, that's the first step on the path to prevent uh, any viruses, any pandemic. A tahara to min al iman. Tahara is from our faith. Number two, avoid interacting between healthy and uh, sick people, because Prophet peace be upon him told us, "La yuridu mumridun ala musih." There is no uh, in interaction between uh, one who is sick with one who is healthy. Uh, thirdly, there is no movement between the area that is not infected and the area that is infected, because Prophet peace be upon him uh, suggested to us that we avoid doing that. Uh, number, number four, our Prophet peace be upon him also advised us that we should look for the remedy if there is any virus or pandemic. وَجَعَلَ لِكُلِّ دَاءٍ دَوَاءٍ As Prophet peace be upon him told us, for every disease there is a medicine. And this is also a call to Muslims to be part of medical experts, to go into medical schools. And alhamdulillah, today with us we do have one of these medical experts who happen to be a Muslim, alhamdulillah, and uh, she would shed some light on this topic. And the point of uh, treatment, uh, treatment or med medical treatment is also very much important because Prophet peace be upon him, when he was, uh, when he was asked by Bedou Arabs who came to ask him some questions of importance for them, they said, ya Rasulullah, should we treat ourselves medically? He told them, naam, tadawal. So today, alhamdulillah, we do have with us a special guest, a dear person to all of us in the community, a person who has uh, done quite a lot uh, in her profession, alhamdulillah. Uh, she's a family uh, medical doctor as well as teaches uh, medicine at uh, University of Ottawa. But what is so important is that her humble attitude with our community and her contributions uh, with Orawa Muslim commu community, Gatino Muslim community, and beyond within the society as well, and specifically being uh, here at SNMC. She has been a board member of SNMC, involved with many projects and programs at SNMC, be it sisters programs or youth programs. And I know, alhamdulillah, that she has given a lot of time into our lead conference. So, we would ask, inshallah, we would invite uh, and welcome uh, our sister, uh, Sister Dr. Asma 
for this program, inshallah, to shed some light on vaccine. And my first uh, question, inshallah, first welcome, Ukhti, Dr. Asma. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for being with us and giving your contribution to SNFC community. Thank you so much, Imam Ziyad. I'm so happy to be here, and um, I'll be happy to help in whatever way we can. Jazakum uh, al How do we attain herd immunity? It's very important questions for us to know. Yes, for sure. So um, I'm glad you brought it up. And uh, the numbers that you're talking about today are very, very alarming. And I just wanted to make one comment on the numbers that we're seeing. The majority of them are from uh, community gatherings. So people uh, that are getting together in their homes with other people. Um, now we are in lockdown. So I really encourage everyone just to please stay home with your own uh, family members and your own uh, bubble. So with respect to immunity, um, it has to do with your immune system. So every person has an immune system, and that immune system is uh, innate, and we have it in our body. Um, and so it has to do with our skin. It has to do with uh, you know uh, mucous membranes, inflammation, uh, fever. And we get this immunity. Uh, it's naturally within us. But then we also have another type of immunity, um, which is adaptive, meaning inside our cells we have antibodies and antigens uh, that come in and they, um, you know, fight, fight off these antigens. So there's natural immunity where if somebody gets COVID, they get the natural immunity. But the problem is we don't know if this natural immunity will last or not. So we are told that it could be maybe three months somebody has this immunity and then they could possibly get it again. It is possible. So basically herd immunity is where you get, uh, you know, everybody gets herd immunity. People will be safe with herd immunity because everybody in, in the community, it's called herd immunity or community immunity, where you get at least 70%, 60 or 70% of the people who get immune to it. Now we can do it the good old way where people get sick and then they get immunity but the problem is is that there are people who are dying or they're getting you know uh, very very sick they're in ICU or they are um, you know after they recover they still have a lot of problems uh, where we're seeing the long COVID syndrome where people are getting quite ill um, and they're not recovering back to their normal 100 percent so what the the what we're proposing and what uh, we're, uh, the researchers and physicians and um, are proposing is that you know we do something called uh, vaccinations and the vaccinations if we can g g uh, vaccinate enough of the population then we can acquire herd immunity and that will protect not only us but people around us who may not have that strong of an immune system. Thank you Ukhti. Excellent. So what we know is that there are basically two approaches, two ways towards gaining this herd immunity. Uh, one that is Islamically unacceptable is basically that uh, allowing infections to spread. Right. And Islamically it is not accepted because uh, many of the, of the sick people and weak people would get inf infected and, and basically would get into, into health problems. And from, from an Islamic perspective, every individual is to be to be saved. Second way is vaccine, and and basically uh, this approach uh, is very compatible with Sharia and the reason, and for that reason acceptable. Uh, we all speak about vaccines, and it seems like we uh, we you know bring information that is uh, hearsay. Please let us know. Uh, uh, what really vaccine is all about and some background on vaccine and, and its history. Yeah, sure. Um, so vaccines have been around for actually hundreds of years. And, uh, you know, we all get vaccines. Our children get vaccines when they go to school. Some employers require vaccines. Um, some people need vaccines in order to travel. And so basically, um, vaccines have been around for a while. And right now, um, across the globe, there's about 150 different companies that are trying to create the COVID-19 vaccines. And the whole idea behind a vaccine is that you take, um, you expose somebody, anybody, a person, to uh, a dead or weakened form of a germ or a pathogen and or to just to a part of it and so that immune system that we were talking about can learn what it is and fight it 
without actually getting the disease. So you don't get the disease, you just get a little part of it in the vaccine. And then once you have enough, uh, high enough level of the population that's vaccinated, uh, you can slow down the spread of the disease uh, through herd immunity or community immunity. And so this is what we're trying to do right now and that many different companies are taking different strategies to do it. Um, so for example, you know, many people get the tetanus vaccine or they may get you know, a chickenpox vaccine when you're young. Um, and these vaccines right now that are, uh, have been approved for the COVID are mRNA vaccines. So mRNA is a different, and it's, it's a bit of a different technology, but it's not new. Um, so I can get into that a little bit more if you'd like, but basically uh, RNA is something that we all have in our bodies, and it performs very important function in our cells and in our bodies. And basically what it does is from the DNA, RNA is produced, it, carry, it goes out into the cell, into the cytoplasm where the proteins are made. And the proteins are made for different things, like for example, you know, for cell uh, health, for cell maintenance, for cell repair, uh, growth, and that type of thing. So basically this is true for pretty much any any living, you know, organism on Earth, um, and so in, in this, with respect to the COVID. Um uh, vaccine, what has happened here is that the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it has an RNA genome, and this genome encodes for like proteins, for example, that build the shell of the virus or the spike protein. I'm sure everyone has seen the picture of the uh, coronavirus with the, sh uh, the spikes on it, right? So this vaccine is something um, that is against that particular spike protein. And so, you know, a virus can't replicate on its own. So it needs to kind of get into our cells to, you know, replicate itself and build more virus. And so that spike protein kind of actually acts as a little key that it um, gets right to our cells and opens it up and, and gets inside. And so this critical spike protein is the target, the potential target for many of the vaccines that are being developed. And so the idea here is, is that if we can show our body this little part of the spike protein and allow it to create antibodies, uh, which are, you know, which are our fighter, fighter uh, proteins, then it will, next time, if it gets exposed to it again, it will be able to fight the virus. And history proves it. Right. Uh, for, for 100 or 200 years, we do have vaccines that have defeated smallpox, that have defeated basically or almost eradicated measles and polio and of course many other uh, illnesses including infections and cancers saved millions of people. Yes, exactly. So in 1980, I think that's when we had eradicated um, smallpox and recently the mRNA vaccine has been used, um, you know, to study for cancer treatment and also it's been used for uh, other, um, uh, you know, research. So it's not new, like since 1990, since 2003 for SARS, uh, the, the first SARS that came for the Ebola virus, um, for um, other viruses such as MERS, uh, these viruses um, have been uh, studied and this technology of mRNA vaccines is not new. It's been researched for you know decades now. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. And alhamdulillah, there are many Muslims in the area and they are contributing their share to this new development. Uh, tell us uh, about um, some vaccines under consideration by Canada and who really approves uh, these vaccines? Yes, that's a really good question. Um, I think it's really important to uh, note that it is Health Canada and Health Canada is an independent body and they look at all the different research. So they look at all the different studies available and all the data and based on that, they will approve it or not. So right now, um, for Health Canada, they've approved the Pfizer BioNTech and the Moderna. Uh, they just did that um, and they've got a couple more that uh, have been um, submitted. One is the Janssen and the AstraZeneca. So these are the four that have been submitted. Two have been approved and the other two are pending approval. Um, and so one thing I'd like to note here is that um, this is um, something that uh, people are saying, like, you know, how did it happen so quickly? How did things occur so fast? It's only been a year. Um, but basically what has happened is that everyone across the globe has put together all their financial resources, all their collaboration, all the researchers. Everybody has just basically come together and put this as a priority. Like, for example, I'm sure you know people who work in the government, so do I. But basically if, you know, you put something on somebody's desk, you send them an email, you may get an email back or something back in like three months or something. Here, all the human 
resources everybody was working on this day and night and I know this because I actually know people who work at Health Canada and I know that how busy they were for the past you know one year trying trying to do this um, so this is how I think it's important that you know Canadians know that Health Canada is being very transparent. You can go look right on their website, and they'll tell you exactly, uh, you know, where it is and what level it's at and what level of approval it's at. Um, so they're they're being very open and. And transparent Health Canada this. works with agencies similar to them across the globe, certainly. Right, exactly. So there's another um, uh, agency called the NACI, uh, National Advisory um, for Immunizations, and basically uh, it's a group of experts, um, and they will look at all the st uh, st statistics, the data, and all the different trials that have been done, and give their recommendations also. So there are also those uh, type of guidelines too. Uh, why it is important for Canadian Muslims then uh, to get vaccine, COVID vaccine? Yeah, um, I know there are people who are questioning it and they're not sure if they should get it or not, but I would recommend um, that everybody you know, look at their own specific situation and speak to their physician whether they should get it or not. Basically, everyone should get this vaccine uh, unless you are allergic. If you have had an allergic reaction to vaccines in the past or if you have an um, allergy to anything that is in the current vaccine, and you can see the ingredients right on the Health Canada's website, but a lot of people have, you know, um, allergy to PEG, which is polyethylene glycol, and it could be something that is uh, in the vaccine. If you've had this allergic reaction, you'd know about it before from other vaccines but according to me either you can um, and, and, and the experts who are recommending it is basically that you can either get COVID which can be very fatal or you can get the vaccine because this is something that you know we have um, uh, treatment for so we can get the vaccine to uh, prevent this from occurring um, so with the vaccine the studies are showing that you know it won't reduce transmissibility meaning that you could still get um, uh, COVID-19. However, the degree or the amount of, uh, of the illness will not be as bad as if you didn't get it. So this is something important uh, to recognize that, you know, even if you get the vaccine, you could still get COVID. But the idea and the theory is that it won't be as bad as if you didn't get the vaccine. So am I recommending, am I going to get it? Yes, I'm going to get it for sure. I'm just waiting for my turn. And I recommend that anybody, um, sh uh, you know, should be waiting for their turn. And as soon as, um, we're allowed to get it. I, I do think everyone should get it. But again, it's very important that people, you know, look into it, they read about it and make an educated um, opinion as to whether they should get it or not. Because it's not mandatory, um, but it's important that people look at, um, you know, valid sources and not things that are floating on social media or WhatsApp chats and that kind of thing. It's very important people look at it and look at valid, legitimate sources to get their information and then speak to their physician about their particular case to see if they should, if they're eligible and if, if, if it's okay for them to get Fully it. Fully agree. One of the problems that we are facing right now with social media is there are many Google experts and WhatsApp experts and right. what they do is basically sharing the information that could potentially put people in dangers and from an Islamic perspective actually that is totally forbidden mm -hmm. uh, because those if somebody gets gets hurt because of that message that they have sent uh, Islamically they are responsible for that and they are liable in the sight of God Almighty and certainly as you pointed out I, I, I really applaud you for your brave attitude and suggesting that you would go and take uh, vaccine as soon as, as, as you get an opportunity. And I second you. I, when I get Excellent. first my opportunity to get vaccine, inshallah, I'm going to get it inshallah. because I already have, I have got many vaccines and each one of them has helped me through life. And these conspiracy theories and, uh, Bex, uh, and those who are saying things about it certainly do have their opinions, their opinions to themselves, but we are talking here about saving lives. Uh, Muslim scholars uh, from Emja, and Emja is one of the, of the largest uh, uh, Muslim scholars group in North America, uh, Association of Muslim uh, Jurists of America. They have said because of the nature of danger the world faces today, the postulated risks are not sufficient to make the vaccine impermissible. Mm -hmm. It is so much important to get this you know, quote from them and, and say that, you know, if there are risks, yes, there could be risks, but it doesn't make this vaccine 
imper impermissible. Please, could you tell us um, about, because people talk about side effects, and, and it is important to know about some of these effects. What are some of these uh, side effects, specifically of, of the, of the, of the uh, vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna that is already approved in Canada? Yes, yes, for sure. And just to tag on to what you said, I think for Muslims specifically, I have been seeing just yesterday and today, in fact, um, they were talking about um, for Hajj and Umrah, that they may, they're uh, highly uh, advising it and recommending it. And I think eventually, just like the meningitis vaccine, many people, you know, come to my office, they say, oh, we need this uh, vaccine for, to go for Hajj. And I believe uh, they, they will be, um, you know, making that uh, uh, important as well, uh, if you want to go for Hajj. So and, and, and there also some other points mm -hmm. interaction with the masjid because if you don't have if, you, if people don't want to to get vaccines they certainly will not be maybe uh, allowed to come because uh, you know a virus could travel and could could make an impact uh, those who are who are who are in the masjid so from that perspective we, we we do need really to consider it please let us know about some of these side effects side effects yes so with any medication any uh, treatment with any vaccines there's always side effects even if we take medications for blood pressure if we take medications for cholesterol uh, any type of uh, medication or treatment always has side effects so for vaccines, we have local side effects, so you get it in your arm, usually you get it in the arm that's non-dominant, so most people are right-handed, you'll give it in your left arm, um, and you might get just a little bit of pain, you might get a bit of, uh, you know, swelling, you might get a, a small, um, you know, uh, some redness or something in, in your arm. Um, the other uh, side effects that you can get that kind of goes in your body is like you might get a little bit of a fever, headache, sometimes your muscles may hurt, you might get some nausea, vomiting. Um, these are very, very typical side effects. Um, and so you get them with a lot of different vaccines. Now there's some side effects which you know we have to be a little bit more careful of. Like for example, if somebody has had an anaphylactic reaction. So you know, whenever you go into your doctor's office, they will always ask you, okay, have you had this vaccine before? Have you had any problems with it? It'll kind of do like a pre-vaccine uh, questionnaire then you get the vaccine they tell you you know you they tell you about all the side effects and everything you get the vaccine and then afterwards you kind of have to wait in the doctor's office for a little while to make sure you're not having a reaction so if you get a reaction you'll get it almost immediately um, and doctors have medications in their offices in case you have a, a severe allergic reaction and they will take care of that for you right away now there have been other um, you know, uh, things in the media that, you know, such and such um, ha other uh, very rare side effects. And, um, you know, people have been asking, but un unfortunately, there's been a lot of misinformation that has been uh, coming around. So, for example, people were asking, well, is it linked to fertility? You know, does it mean like, you know, people can't um, have children or something? So, again, there's no evidence. And it's actually biologically, it's not really plausible that um, it would be linked to fertility. Um, and then there were also um, some social media memes going around about, you know, Bell's palsy where you know somebody has like a, some a droop on their face um, but again when you look at the studies uh, the number of people who got that ver and compared to the regular population it's approximately the same so they're not attributing it to the vaccine so again I mean other people I'm sure other uh, things on social media has gone viral where you see like uh, you know somebody getting the vaccine and then they faint right after right so that's uh, you know very typical some people get that and these people usually they're afraid of you know needles and they have a hard time you know um, having blood taken and that kind of thing. So for them, we just usually have special arrangements so we get them to lie down or, you know, if they have to go get their blood taken, we put them in a special room and they can lie down and have water and be comfortable so they don't react like that. So all these things, yes, it's possible, but the majority of people will just get the local side effects, very minor, and yes, there can be, you know, um, severe side effects as well, but those are very, very rare. Amja uh, writes that they have been informed by, by uh, trustworthy Muslim uh, physicians and experts mm -hmm. uh, about uh, studies uh, in, in, in which they have been part of. And, and they have suggested that out of 20,000 uh, people who have uh, been studied uh, after uh, Pfizer, uh, no many of them have had or they didn't have at all any serious side effects and that is quite of an interest for us and as what you said certainly supports it. 
Yes, exactly. So the Pfizer vaccine, I believe uh, the trials had like 50,000 people and the other one had about 40,000 people. Um, so they usually have like different arms, so the people who got the vaccine and the other people who got a placebo. So again, they had a large, large number. Um, so when you look at the vaccine, they actually, you know, initially they do some research, they do some exploratory uh, research to try and figure out which approach they should take and what kind of vaccine they should make because there's different types. There's, you know, live, attenuated, then there's like, you know, the killed, inactivated, then there's, um, you know, uh, one they, they produce in a, in a toxin, uh, sorry, um, to, uh, different forms, um, a, a capsid to, you know, introduce it into the cell. Um, but basically, um, I think it's important to know that when they did these trials, you're right, the, the number of uh, uh, side effects were very rare. And the other good thing is we know our regulatory bodies are there is that if something like this did occur, uh, where, you know, phase one, they test maybe 10 to 30 people, and then after that, they move to hundreds, then they move to thousands and tens of thousands, that if anything did occur, you will notice that in the media, they said, okay, let's Let's stop that trial. Let's go back, see what happened, and then um, try and and you know fix it again. So they do the te they do the trials on you know in in the labs, in in um, cell cultures, in animals. Then they move on to people, um, and then afterwards, even after you get the vaccine, they'll be continuing to collect data for any type of adverse effects, and um, it'll it'll keep going and continuing until um, they uh, complete the trials. So now, if I get vaccine, can I go back to my normal life? I wish. <laughs> I wish we could, and that's a really good um, uh, discussion. But unfortunately, I think at this point, no one is going to be able to go back to that quite yet. Because you see, there will be some people who have had one dose, some people will have two doses, some people will have nothing, some people will you know, still be waiting their turn. Uh, so because of that, I think it's really important that we you know, continue the public health measures. Uh, we continue you know, the two meters uh, distance, we continue wearing masks, we continue washing our hands. Um, and you know, stay in our bubbles, and it's very, very important because um, we have to not only protect ourselves but others. I mean, it's a huge duty and responsibility that you know we make sure that we aren't infecting other people. Like, for example, if you live in a multi-generational home, you may have children, and then the parents and grandparents. So it's really, really important that you know we continue the public health measures and also uh, report any uh, adverse side effects, um, and also be wary of. Um, uh, you know, these days, unfortunately, we know with the pandemic, everyone's online and there are a lot of, you know, scams and things that are coming up and people are talking about these online uh, fake vaccines that are coming up. So if they come up, please do not buy them. They're not real. They're not true. Uh, the only people who have the vaccines are right now are the, you know, the, the governments who are um, uh, purchasing them. And, uh, you know, essentially a lot of the uh, companies are give, giving them out for free, like at cost. So it's going to be free to all Canadians. And I really think about all the people who or in different countries, you know, it's a public health issue that um, is it um, where other people may not have access to the wonderful health care we do have here in Canada. Um, and uh, per capita, we actually have secured the greatest number of vaccines per capita for Canadians. So I, I really think that is a huge achievement. And inshallah, once we get the vaccines, we will be able to give them to everyone. And that's exactly what we expect from our government. Uh, kindness and, uh, and respect for the preservation of life. And uh, I would ask, inshallah, our uh, dear Dr. Uh, uh, Esma to uh, give us final advice after all what has been said. Please uh, share that advice with the community. Yes, for sure. So I think um, it's really important to um you know, address a couple of things. One thing that uh, people keep asking is that, you know, can this affect my DNA? So no, the answer is no. There's no danger of the, vi uh, the, M the mRNA virus affecting your DNA because basically your DNA um, is inside the nucleus and the mRNA um, goes just to uh, the cytoplasm, which is just outside. And so it's not going to get inside and there's no risk of integration of your DNA with the RNA. Um, and the other thing too is that the RNA uh, breaks down pretty quickly and so we're not going to be you know indefinitely producing these type of uh, spike proteins that's why it's refrigerated at such cold temperatures to make sure that the RNA is is uh, uh, stable um, and so 
can and can you get COVID-19 from the vaccine itself? So again, the answer is no. You can't get COVID-19 from the vaccine because it only has a small portion of the uh, genetic code of the virus, and um, it codes only for the spike protein. So all the other parts, like you know the capsid and whatever, it's not going to be able to create more virus. So uh, these are a few, a few of the most common questions that we're getting. But yes, you know it's been a really really long year. 2020 has not been uh, easy for anybody. You know it's been very, very difficult for people who are staying at home, uh, people who are having lockdown. Uh, you know, we're concerned about everybody's mental health. We're concerned about people's financial health. But I think this vaccine is showing us, you know, some hope, some hope on the horizon where we can say, well, you know, there may be an end in sight. Uh, hopefully with this vaccine, um, we should definitely all just wait our turn and do our part. And uh, inshallah, when we do get a turn, I do recommend, you know, do speak to your physician and uh, inshallah, you can get it. The other thing I wanted to talk about is just about the COVID, um, the variant. I know there is a variant in the UK and also different parts of the world that have been documented. It started in the UK. We can also see it in South Africa, in the States, Canada, it's coming up. But the vaccine should still work against it. I mean, they are collecting data, so it's still to be seen. But inshallah, the um, just today, in fact, I saw an article where uh, they believe, uh, based on some data that they got, that it's still working. So it should still work, inshallah. Allah, um, and that is the hope. But again, only time will tell because this is new for everybody. Uh, bottom line is, do your share, as you would suggest. To get vaccine and raise your hands to Allah. Put trust in Him. Jazakallah khaira. May Allah subhanahu wa taala reward you for this beautiful guidance. Uh, we, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you very much, and we pray to you, for you and your families that. Uh, you are well and safe I mean, I mean. and we pray to Almighty to help us eradicate this virus uh, and save all human brothers and sisters from the pandemic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.